Well, good golly, said Little Miss Molly. Hey there, Rock and Roll Junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. The first of many, hopefully. Now, in this episode, we'll be talking about Deep Purple and their new album, Infinite. Now, Infinite was, was released April 7th, 2017. Now, first, let me just start off on my history of Deep Purple, how I learned about Deep Purple. I think it would have been around 10th or 11th grade where I first started to become interested in Deep Purple. Now, I always knew about Deep Purple. Like, Smoke on the Water, I've heard that a thousand times in movies and shows, whatever. I mean, once you hear the dun, 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 everyone's heard that. Even if you don't know who it is, you've heard that. So, you know, growing up, I heard that song. I didn't know who it was, but I really liked it. And then I finally discovered Deep Purple in 10th grade. And I listened to, the first album I listened to was probably Machine Head because it had Smoke on the Water. And I really liked that song and just that album. And then I just got more into them. And right now, I've only heard the albums with Ian Gillen. To me, Deep Purple is Mark II. That is pure Deep Purple to me. I've listened to uh, Burn, and I like the song of Burn, but not all of it. To Burn, to me, just that lineup, it, it's different. It's not the same as what Mark II did, and I respect that, but at the same time, I'm just so used to what Mark II did, or maybe it's the fact that I'm just so enamored with Ian Gillen. I just, I worship Ian Gillen, and I love every single album they did with him. I even love Who Do We Think We Are? Nobody likes that album except me. I actually, I will say I like that album more than Burn. I know that's kind of controversial. Some people don't agree with me, but I love who we think we are. And, well, this album, Infinite, I had no idea it was coming out. I didn't know when they announced it or anything like that. It just, well, a few weeks before it came out, I learned that it was coming out. And I was like, oh, a new album by Deep Purple. That's interesting. This lineup, I've actually never heard a single album by this lineup. Uh, the farthest I've ever gotten into Deep Purple was probably who, no, no. The Battle Rage is on. I almost said who we think we are. The Battle Rage is on. That is one of my favorite albums ever, The Battle Rage is on. I've never listened past that point. And it's not because I'm against uh, Steve Morse and the whole Richie Blackmore thing. I'm, I'm fine with the current lineup. I just never got around to it. And since they, this lineup released this album, I was like, I might as well listen to it, right? So I did. And, well, I like it. I do like it. I will say that I like it quite a bit. I don't love it, but for what this album is at this point in this band's career, it says a lot. So let's get into the first song right now. The first song is Time for Bedlam. Now I have my notes here. Now, Time for Bedlam is a pretty cool song. Now, the first time I heard Time for Bedlam, I didn't like it at all. And that's an ongoing theme we're gonna hear here in this channel that I don't like things the first time I hear them. I even hate them the first time I hear them. And I did not like this song at all the first time I heard it. That robotic voice in the beginning, I hated it. I just did not like it. It was very proggy, and I'm just not used to Deep, Deep Purple being this proggy. If we were talking about, say, Iron Maiden, then I'd get it, but since I haven't listened to anything this lineup has released, I wasn't used to the whole progginess of it all. But after listening to this album, I really enjoy this. I love this song. It's such a good song. That robotic voice in the beginning, I love that voice. It's so good. It has an overall prog sound to it. Ian Gillen sounds great on it. Musically, it's fantastic. And that's something I want to say about the whole album. The whole album musically is amazing. Everyone on instruments is completely giving their all and they're hitting every note and there's not a dud note in there. It's all just flawless. This song, specifically this one, uh, the keyboard and guitars are amazing. They have like this little combo. Uh, Roger Glover described the song as vicious. And he really liked the, the, the guitar and keyboard combo that was going on. Really, really good. Now, I didn't like this song at first, but now I absolutely just love it. So now we move on to the second song, which is Hip Boots. Uh, I've listened to a lot of people describe this song as not good or it's just bad overall. 
I I have to say I love hip boots. Now this is a song, the first time I heard it, I really liked it. It's the band described this song about being free and not being a, a slave, being above things like that. This, this band is really ambiguous at times, but for the most part, I really like this song. It has a classic Deep Purple sound to it. That's at least what I'm hearing from it. Uh, it's very rock and roll. It kind of it has like elements of Battery Design. Maybe that's just me, but like the riff, some of the melodies kind of remind me of Battle Rage is on songs from that album, not specifically that song. Musically, again, it's great. Ian's great again. And it kind of reminds me of a 70s kind of sound that the Purple would have done back then. So for this song, I just think it's great. Two for two, just really great. We move on to the third song, is, which is All I Got Is You. Now, this song starts to kind of mellow with a, you know some keyboard and I just I just love it. The lyrics the lyrics are great. I love the lyrics. And again, these are like Ian Gillen lyrics which are kind of weird and only make sense when he when he sings them. Now, I read here that the title actually came from Ian Pace. Uh, well, Roger says that you know Ian would go to, go up to you and say things like, "Look at it this way: you've got me, and all I've got is you." Again, just like an inside joke to these people, but I really like the song, and you know, it's about a relationship that goes bad. And you know, these guys didn't, didn't want to do love songs anymore. They're, they say they're too old. They gotta write things more their age, and they're not, they're not writing about cars or girls anymore. And I think this song is just really, really good overall. It's just musically, lyrically, it's it's all there. It's it's very proggy again, just like the last one. The there's a keyboard solo there. It has like these sounds. It kind of sounds like an alien sci-fi spaceship thing going on. I really loved it. Ian Gillen gives a very powerful performance on All I Got Is You. Very powerful, very just angry and passionate, his voice and the ending, I just love how this song ends, it just all just builds up and it just ends perfectly, just so perfectly. And now guys, we move on to the fourth song, which is One Night in Vegas. Now this song has a really nice groove to it. One Night in Vegas. It lyrically tells a pretty, pretty cool story. It's an interesting story. Uh, here's the thing though, it's, it's somewhat filler. But... I've enjoyed it more as I've listened to it that I, it's filler, but it's still, it's, it's not filler, it's just like there to be there. I feel like this had a point and a purpose. It just isn't as good as the rest of the album. Now, the story here is that, uh, uh, let's see, Don Airy came, well, told the guys this story about there was the bassist from Fog Hat back in the day. He went to Vegas with the band. And then he was like partying after the show. He went with these girls and he woke up the next day. Didn't remember anything from the night before. So hungover. And he sees this girl and he's like, uh, who are you? And she's like, well, I'm your wife. And according to, you know, the story, they're still together 30 years later. You know, it all happened one night in Vegas. So, I mean, the story is it's pretty nice. It's a pretty interesting, funny little story. I like it. I like the groove, I like this song, it's, it's a good song. Filler, but it's a good filler. Now we move on to the fifth song, which is Get Me Out of Here. Now I really like this song. Like, it, again, it's proggy, but it's like, it's heavy prog sound. Again, I, I hear a little, like, it reminds me of a Battle Rages on the vibe here. I love Ian's delivery. He even does a little scream here, you know? You can't do a scream like you used to back in the day, so don't expect something crazy. But he does have a little scream there. Uh, he's kind of like uh, rhyming in the song, you know, in his style of singing. And I just think it's great. I think I love the ending, where he says basically goodbye in different languages. I love that. Let me look at my notes to see if I have anything else on this one. Hmm. It was an experimental song where they basically got a drum track from the last album, which I haven't heard and they basically slowed it down to come up with this one. 
which is interesting. Uh, I'd have to listen to that other song, but that they got a song, an old song, basically. I mean, you could say it's a remake, but it's not. They just took the drums and made a new song out of it. It's it's pretty good though, from from me hearing it. Now we move on to the sixth song, which is the surprising. A lot of people say that this is the best song on the album. And it's not my favorite on the album, but I will say it's the best. Now it sounds weird, but I'm gonna say that a lot about a lot of things in this channel that, oh my God, this, I love this album, but I think this was better. I love this song, but I think this was better. It's just how I am. And I agree with everybody saying the song is the best one on the album. It has like this eerie, like sci-fi alien intro, which goes into like this, this, you know, slow mellow guitar. The lyrics here are amazing. They make absolutely no sense again, but they are so good. I think this is Ian Gillen's best performance vocally on this album. The keyboards are amazing, the bass is great, the drums are fantastic, just real heavy stuff. It's a complete prog epic. And it slows down to the end. I love that when it just slows down, and then it picks up with more of a lot of guitar, and it just, you know, builds, and it's just great. Just an overall fantastic song. And, you know, according to Roger, uh, Steve Morse came up with this, the riff and everything, and the guys just you know started jamming and they, they came up with the song, and the song was originally called The Surprising Mr. Morse, and they just took off Mr. Morse and left it as The Surprising. And if you notice, they never actually say the word surprising or the surprising in the song. It was just a working title that they kept because they couldn't think of another one, and I think it's a great title. I think the song is very surprising. I think Steve Morse is, uh, was very surprising to come up with this, and I think it's just it's just great. Roger described it as ambiguous, which it is. And Ian Gillen's lyrics are always ambiguous. But I just think it's, like I said, a prog, I think a prog masterpiece for a band that I'm just not used to doing that so much prog. I think they're doing a great job with this album. And then we move on to Johnny's band. It has a great intro. Again, a very prominent bass. On this intro, it tells a pretty cool story. Uh, as the guys explain it, it's a typical, you know, rock and roll story. A bunch of kids get together, make a band, you know, you know, and problems come into the band, and they're fighting, and people leave, and then years later, oh man, we should get back together, get back together, and all that, and you know, the typical story that happens to a band. The guys say that it's set like in the '60s, so it's not about purple, even though. You could say it is, with the whole Richie Blackmore and Ian Gillen and everyone leaving and breaking up and all that. It's... that's a keyboard solo in it that I really just like. But again, just like the other song, it is fillerish. And I don't, I don't really agree with this being after the surprising. I just don't feel that it lives up to what The Surprising did, you know? The Surprising just left you on this high note and you go into this one, which isn't as high. And I will have to say that it's my least favorite on the album. Uh, some people are gonna disagree with that, I know. But it just doesn't do much for me. It just, I think the whole story is cool and all that and the whole message of sticking to who you are and what you are, I think that's cool and all, but it just does nothing for me outside of that. But it's musically, again, the whole album is great musically, so it's worth listening to for the music. Now we move on to the eighth song, which is On Top of the World. Uh, Ian Gillen isn't really singing here, he's more like speak singing, uh, talk singing, but I really, I really dig the chorus. I love the chorus here in this song. The keyboards have like a classic sound, it reminds me of something off the 70s albums or Perfect Strangers. Very John Lord, uh, Don Aries channeling here. The, that robotic voice from the first song comes back and I love it. It's, I can feel it's filler, but it's just like, it's, it's good filler. It's worth listening to. It, again, it tells a story of Ian Gillen back in the day. He met these girls after a show and they invited him to their place. 
which basically was on top of this building. They were like these uh, call girls, working girls, and he got naked with them, and he partied with them. And I mean, if you read the lyrics, it's basically straight up the story. And they were really struggling how to make this story into a song, and I think they did a good job. But it's, it is weird because again, it's like talk singing, not really singing, singing. But I really like the song and I've, I've liked it more over time, but I do feel it's somewhat fillerish. It, it is, I don't feel that that was our intention because I, they are very experimental with this album and I feel they were experimenting there with turning a song, a story into a song. I think they did a good job. It's just not as good as other songs on this album. Which leads me into the ninth song, Birds of Prey. Now this, this is my favorite song on the album. It has a very heavy intro. Roger came up with the riff here. It's my favorite song on the album. Again, the effects on Gillian's voice, very prog, but just very good. Just another prog epic after the last one. This is the prog, you know, magnum opus, which, which finishes the album. It is great. The guitar solo is fantastic, it just escalates. And like I said, I feel that this, this song just ends on such a high note that this should have just closed the album. Now well, let me see some notes here. Roger says that the song is supposed to take you on a journey, you know, and that everybody wants peace, but we never have it, and it's just wishful thinking. His first image uh, when coming up with the song was 9 11, you know, that's where the idea of Birds of Prey came from. And it's a great song. It's a fantastic song. And it should have finished the album because the next song is Roadhouse Blues. And this song, as you know, it's a cover of The Doors song, Roadhouse Blues. If you like that song by The Doors, then it is a good song. And But I have a thing against covers because I feel that they're filler. Because, I mean, a band is like, oh, what do we do now? Oh, let's put a cover. Well, why not? Let's put a cover of a song people really like. That way they can't hate it. That being said, this song is surprisingly really good. Like, musically, I feel like they really delivered on this song. It was, I think, uh, Ian Pace's idea to put this song on here. He just suggested this one because he would go see cover bands and I think they were doing Black Knight by Deep Purple and then they just went into Roadhouse Blues and Ian Pace really liked that. So he was like, hey, why don't, why don't we do that? And so, you did it. Yeah, although, I mean, um, I, I still feel there should have been like a bonus track because I feel it's, it's unnecessary and it undermines Birds of Prey. The keyboards are real good, they're really funny forward with the song, uh, the guitar is great, everything's great in the song. Musically, the deliver, it's a, it's a good cover, it does justice to the original. I just feel that it, it's not necessary, and Birds of Prey should have closed the album. Now that's, that's the end of the album, guys. Overall, I think this album is worth checking out. Like as I said, musically, it's really, really, really good. Instruments are great, everybody is great, Ian Gillian sounds fantastic. Now this is a band that is very old, the members are very old. They don't have to make this album. They have nothing to prove, they're deep purple. But you know, they went into this to have fun, they had a good time, and they made a great album. I think it's a great album. Even though some of the songs aren't you know, up to par to the rest, musically, musically it's great. I mean, these guys could just release instrumentals, they would be just fantastic. Now, you know, some of the songs here are filler, but they would grow on you. Some have grown on me, some I still don't really care for. But for the most part, you know, two prog epics that are just fantastic. And some other songs are just really catchy and fun. I think it's a great album. I think they did a, they did a good job with this album. I think, you know, looking at this, I feel like, you know, Deep Purple, are Deep Purple, and this is the lineup that it is, and this is what you're gonna have. This, this, is, this is the best you can expect from them. I really like this album, guys. Thanks for watching. Till next time. This is Grey Wolf, and remember to stay metal, stay devil, and stay evil. All right. Are we done here? Whoa, I don't know. Oh wait guys, I got one more thing before I go. I'd like to recommend you one album. I like to do this every single video. 
Mm, let's call this the pick of the vid. This is my pick for you guys. I've been talking a lot about Battle Rages on, so I, my recommendation is Battle Rages on by Deep Purple, the final album with the classic Mark II lineup and Ricky Blackmore. Listen to that album. If you haven't listened to it, listen to it. If you have, listen to it again. I feel it's very underrated. I feel people just put it down. I think it's a fantastic album. Amazing album. Thanks for watching, guys. That's gonna be all. Bye.